Last week, I made this video about an insane update in Google AI Studio that allows you to create custom no-code apps and run them for zero dollars. And it's safe to say you guys went crazy about it. I mean, who doesn't want to automate boring tasks for free? So I decided to make this video to show you how to build actually useful apps with this feature so you can cancel all of your paid AI tool subscriptions. Like this 100% free app that turns your YouTube video into a dashboard with a summary and audio overview, transcript, and even an interactive quiz you can complete to check what you learned. And yes, it's fully functional, and I've been using this every single day at zero cost. And no, you don't need any coding skills or advanced AI knowledge to build one of these apps. All you need is just an idea and a little bit of patience and creativity. So in today's video, we're going to create different apps in Google AI Studio, so you can create an AI tool of your own. I'll show you how to prompt it right, what features you can implement like live API, multi-model understanding, native speech generation, and finally I'll show you how you can deploy one of these tools if you decide to go live. I'll be including templates that you can just copy to your AI studio and turn them into the app you need. So this is going to be the only video you'll ever need to watch until some new updates come out. So make sure to subscribe. Let's get right into it. So let's go over the apps we're going to be building in today's video. These are the apps I use every single day now, and I'm going to share them with you. But remember that these are just examples of what this tool is capable of. So you can apply these principles and build a 100% custom tool of your own. We're going to start off simple with an app that turns your analytics into your ideas ideal customer persona. You just need to upload files and images with your analytics and I'll use Gemini's multi-model understanding to turn them into your ideal customer. I just uploaded my YouTube analytics screenshots here, hit generate, and this is apparently what my ideal subscriber looks like. We've got some basic information, their image generated with Imagine 3, description, their goals and interests. Comment down below if Gemini got it right and you look kind of like this. But I thought that this idea was just a little bit boring, so I took it to the next level with this next app that lets you talk to your ideal customer live. We're just going to copy the persona information from our last app, add it to our form here, describe what they're going to look like, and you'll see that Gemini will use native audio dialogue to match the voice and style to a character, and it will even use Imagine 3 to generate a 3D cartoon style image of them. So this is the subscriber it gave me. Let's go ahead and hit start and talk to them. What tools do you usually use in your workflow? Man, I'm always checking out new stuff, but Google AI Studio and Perplexity are definitely in the regular rotation. I mess around with different AI models to automate some of my coding tasks and just improve my workflow, you know? This is unlike any other live mode we've got available right now, even in paid tools, and it is fully customizable. Next, we'll get into probably the most useful app of the video, Video Insights, that turns the videos you upload into an interactive dashboard. I'm just going to paste the link to my previous video here, and you'll see that you can watch it directly from here. I'm not speeding this up. And in just a few moments, we'll have our video summarized with an audio overview. We get a full-on transcript that also analyzes text and visuals on the screen. So this isn't just a transcript. And if we go to the quiz part and click generate, you'll get a test here to see how well you were listening to me. Let's go ahead and go through this. As you can see, it shows the correct and incorrect answers. You know that feeling after a meeting where you can't help but feel that you forgot something? It happens to me all the time. Well, the next app is going to solve that. All you need is just paste in your meeting transcript. I've got this demo Google Meets one here. and almost instantly is going to process everything and lay it out nicely. We've got our meeting topics right here, our meeting summary with the overview, main points we discussed and the conclusion. And I can even just listen to this while I'm doing something else. But most importantly, we've got our action items list that separates all of the tasks by users. We've got our urgency and status here and it's fully interactive so I can filter this. 
and update the status of the task to make sure I've finished everything after the meeting. Then I'd like to get into Gemini's live capabilities with this five minute office Spanish lesson coach. We can choose our Spanish level here from the drop down menu, hit start and I'll basically go live and give you a lesson. And what I absolutely love about this is just how intelligent it is. You can switch between languages on the fly and you can even ask it to adjust your lesson difficulty. Let's go ahead and try it out. How about, could you please provide me with the information? How would you say that in Spanish? ¿Me puedes mandar la información? That's close. A more formal way to say it is, ¿podría proporcionarme la información, por favor? Proporcionarme is a more formal way to say provide. I mean, Duolingo has nothing on this, and of course you can revamp it to be anything like a sales coach or to practice your job interview. Next, we've got a super useful tool for contracts, agreements, and other tricky legal documents. You can upload any agreement here, press analyze document, and it'll display all of the hidden clauses, potential risks, and conditions. As you can see here, you can go through all of the cards one by one, tick them off the lists, and once you've reviewed everything, you know that no one is trying to trick you and you're ready to sign that contract. So now that you know everything that's possible with this tool, and as you just saw, if you get creative, you can accomplish quite a lot. Let's actually get into building one of those apps. Uh, for that, you're going to head over to Google AI Studio and get to the build section. So the way that's going to work, you just type out what you'd like Gemini to create, and it'll go ahead and code the app for you, and then you can fully use it in the preview mode or deploy it, but I find that this approach only works with simple apps. If you're building a more advanced one like Live API or native audio generation, it's the best idea to just open one of these example apps or use one of my templates that I left in the description and then just go ahead and modify them step by step, otherwise the functionality just won't work. So now let's get just a little bit technical and see what features you can add to your app and what are the limitations. First of all, your app will be able to run on the world's smartest AI model, Gemini 2.5, so you can pretty much have it create anything on the front end, like quizzes, interactive dashboards, 2D animations, video games, visualizers. You can really get super creative here. We get access to the newest live API, Gemini 2.5 Native Audio Dialogue. It's absolutely amazing. It's completely multilingual, so it can switch between languages mid-sentence and understand even the worst audio, horrible accents and whispering. So your app will be able to talk to users in real time in pretty much any language and even understand horrible audio. When it comes to media generation, your app will be able to produce pretty much anything apart from video, although you'll see here that they're planning on adding it here soon too. We get access to the world's highest quality speech generation, so your app will be able to create voiceovers in any style, language, or accent with Gemini 2.5 native audio generation. It's the best one I've seen so far. You also will be able to generate music with Lyria. It's not the best one, but it works if you're thinking of integrating music into your app and you'll be able to create images with Imagine 3. Again, it's not the newest one, but it's definitely functional and you saw from my example that it works. When it comes to input, you can pretty much create a completely multimodal app that can process audio, video, visuals, text and files all at the same time. So your user can record audio, upload images and Gemini will be able to handle all of that. Your app will also have access to real-time information, so you could have it analyze websites, links, and even browse internet in real time. We don't get access to many external APIs, but you can embed locations from Google Maps and you even use this 3D globe map visualizer in your app. I built something like this in my last video, so make sure to check it out if you haven't watched that. Now, as for the limitations, you need to understand that Google made this platform for developers to test out front-end apps, so it's not actually supposed to be used the way we're using it. This is just the life hack that somehow works, so you'll only be able to build apps that process and output data with AI, so don't expect to add any advanced backend like saving information in databases or adding real Google integrations like Gmail and Google Calendar. This is mostly just front-end.
Just wanted to quickly jump on here and say, if you're struggling to automate your workflow or want to learn how to use all of the latest AI tools to their full potential, I offer live consulting where I show you how to streamline your work and get the most out of all of the latest AI features. So if you're interested, check the link in the description or just join our AI community for free. Let's get back to the video. Now you know what features you can add, but how do you actually prompt it right without having to sit there for hours like I did when I first started? Well, don't worry, because I spent about two weeks straight testing all the possible prompts, so now it takes me almost no time to generate the app I want, so let's actually go over all of the apps we're going to be building in this video. Starting with a simple Persona app, I'm just going to head over to Build and enter our top prompt in the text field. You can also add any reference images or PDFs if you're looking for a specific design or feature. I'm just going to say, generate an app where the user uploads all files regarding the target audience in form of documents, sheets, images, and text. And once they press generate persona, you'll use Gemini API multi-model understanding to process all of the input and turn it into text. Now, when you're processing any files or images, make sure you ask it to use Gemini API, otherwise it won't work. And first turn all of the input to text before you start doing anything with that information. Then based on the text, generate a persona description in the following format. And I provide all of the three cards that I wanted. Make sure you specify the format of what you'd like to see, otherwise I find that it's harder to change later. Now in card one, I'd like to create kind of a persona ID with the image on the left, and if you'd like to generate an image with Imagine 3, it's a great idea to provide what prompt uh, Gemini should use, otherwise it will just look horrible. So I wrote, Turn the text, so the text we generated from all of the files, into a short image prompt describing our persona's looks, and then use Imagine 3 to generate a square image with this prompt. Specify the format of the image, otherwise it might not look like what you want. And I also provided the fields I wanted. And for card two or three, just describe key persona details and display the persona's goals and interests. Now, here's a clause you should use in all of the apps you're building, because remember that this is just an app for front-end developers and it kind of tends to create demo apps. So I'm just gonna say, do not use fake data. This has to be a fully functional app that uses Gemini API to process files. So what we're done here. I'm just gonna send that in now and let's see what it does. And here's actually the first app that generated for me. Let's go ahead and upload our YouTube analytics here. Hit generate. And this is the persona we get. It looks pretty good. We have our image here generated by Imagine 3. I think it looks pretty realistic. And we've also got all of the cards here. Now, to make changes to your app, you're just going to head over to the code assistant on the left here and ask it to modify something. Now, make sure you put this clause in, make changes without modifying the app's main functionality, because I find that sometimes you ask it to change something tiny and it goes in and recodes the whole thing. We don't on that. So I'm just going to ask it to modify a couple of things. Now here's what our persona looks like after the changes. It's so much easier to read. Let's go ahead and copy our persona and we're ready to make David go live. Now to talk to our persona, I modified the chatterbot app because I found that it was pretty similar. There's an input form at the beginning and then you can choose different characters and styles with Gemini 2.5 Live API. So this is a kind of prompt I use. Without altering the main character and voice functionality, make sure to put this in, otherwise it could recode everything. And I asked it to modify this app to be the tool where the users can chat with their ideal customer persona. And I just wrote kind of the first form I'd like to see. This is going to be the persona's name, the description we copied from our previous app, and also describe what the person will look like for Imagine 3 to generate a perfect image. And when they hit start chatting button, we will use Gemini 2.5 to select a perfect voice and style. And I also mentioned that I'd like it to match the gender and age perfectly, and for it to be casual as if you're talking to a real person. And for the image, I also provided the prompt that I'd like it to be kind of in a 3D character style instead of a real image, no text and on dark background, so it blends with the app perfectly. So here's the app we got. I'm just going to fill out all of the information about David, including what he looks like, and press start chatting. And you'll see that it's choosing the voice here and generating the image with Imagine 3. And this is what David looks like. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Hey. I'm David Miller. 
I'm a software engineer who's super into AI. Is there anything you want to chat about? For our YouTube dashboard, I just modified this video to a learning app that is supposed to turn videos into games, but actually just doesn't work. I think it's such an overload for the preview mode. It just quits every time, but our app works somehow. So I just asked it not to change the main functionality, but instead of games, turn the video into an interactive dashboard featuring a summary, transcript, and a quiz window. And I just provided what I wanted to see in each one. For the summary, add an audio overview button that will voice over the text using speech synthesis in a pleasant female voice for the transcript script. The transcript and in the quiz button, I added the generic quiz button that will turn the transcript into an interactive quiz of 10 and 30 questions. And when the answer is clicked, displayed the right and wrong one. And of course, I completely revamped the design. It took me a couple of prompts, but I basically just asked it to make the design look more modern, sleek, and minimal. And I'm super happy with the final result. And it works pretty quickly too, much better than any of the other AI tools I use. As you might have guessed, meeting transcripts was the easiest app to build. I just asked Gemini to create an app where the user pastes in the meeting transcript, and when they press start, it uses Gemini API to process the script, identify main topics, meeting summary, and actions list. Now, of course, you can add real video uploads here with video understanding. I just don't really see the point since almost every app has transcription features now. Display the information in card-slide format using modern CRM style design. And I just wrote here, highlighted topics, meeting summary, and below cards, display an interactive actions item dashboard that will showcase all the tasks that need completion. The dashboard will have features like filtering by all categories and changing the task status. And that was pretty much it. Now, after every meeting, I'll log in here and make sure I complete all of my tasks. I think that is also also pretty useful if you miss the meeting and you just want to catch up. Now, to build something like a live Spanish teacher, I first created this reusable live AVI template. I'll of course leave it in the description so you can just copy it for free. You can change the 2D visualize you see on the screen by just uploading the visual you want, listing it to something like this. And for the functionality, you can just pretty much ask Gemini to modify it into anything, like ask it to be your sales objection code. So when you send that in, that looks really, really good. As for a contract dashboard, there's really nothing new here. I just asked it to use Gemini API to process all of the documents the user uploads and turn them to text first. And then in this text, identify hidden clauses, potential risks, key conditions, and obligations. And I provided in which format I'd like them displayed. So I'd kind of like it to look like a dashboard with boxes. And when you tick each box, it kind of disappears. And then we display the message that you have reviewed everything. This is such a useful app. I use it all the time. It makes small print hard to miss. Now, let's say you want this app to go live or connect it to a domain. You can do it super easily by just deploying it to Cloud Run. And to do this, you're just going to press on the rocket icon in your app and you'll get this window to set up your billing. So you're just going to go ahead and do that. You get about $300 of free credits and these apps don't usually cost that much to run. Just make sure to check that before you deploy it. Now, once your billing is set up, you're going to go back to your Google AI Studio app and press deploy. It's going to take a few minutes and once it's live, you'll see a couple of things here. You can either just open the app with this URL, you could fully use it and share it with anyone, or you could connect a domain by clicking open in Google Cloud in your app, go to networking, and you can connect your custom domain from here. Google AI Studio is constantly launching more and more updates, like they've just added Imagine 4 here that allows you to generate even more realistic images with text. For now, it's only available for testing, but soon we'll also be able to build it into our apps, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss an update again. If you haven't watched my previous video, make sure to check it out. I built three more super useful apps for you to try. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.